For any of the cameras you've chosen for your project, you'll have all the sequentially numbered images in a folder. Let's open them in a sprite to combine them into a single file. So, open the first image in the sequence by double-clicking on it. A sprite will ask if you want to open all the files belonging to this as an animation. Accept and wait for it to load. All the images are loaded in order on the timeline. On the left, we have a palette of 256 colors extracted automatically from the image. We can organize the palette in various ways. You can see the level of anti-aliasing applied to our render in detail against the transparent background. Some functions we'll use repeatedly include creating empty frames, so make sure to familiarize yourself with keyboard shortcuts to save time efficiently. We'll also use the function to create tags on the timeline. These are essentially ranges assigned to a certain number of frames to organize our timeline into segments, which we can rename as we like. If your character only uses a single camera orientation, hold on a bit and let me explain the process for the more complex genre. If this is your case, you'll need to open the sequences now. But as you'll notice, it's challenging to locate the start of each sequence as you scroll down. My suggestion is to use your File Explorer search functions to filter and locate the beginning of each rendered sequence. Given the naming convention of the sequence, I can copy the common suffix shared by the other sequences, add an asterisk at the beginning, and the search result will filter only the files I'm interested in. So, in my case, starting from scratch, I drag my initial eight sequence files directly into a sprite. And to prevent the dialog box from asking the same question eight times, I check the box to import all sequences automatically. Now, use one of the files to bring the other sequences into this one. Go to each file, copy the layer by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl-C, then go to the master file and paste it. Once you have all the sequences, you can rename each layer by double-clicking on it. Please, do not make the mistake of saving in PNG format. I haven't saved yet, but you can do so. Still, make sure to save it as an A sprite format. Now let's create tags. To do this, select all the frames from the timeline that belong to the first animation, Idle, and in the Frames menu, choose Tag and create a new tag. Assign it a name. It's time to do this for all the animations. I've created a custom command shortcut to create tags quickly. I suggest you use your own keyboard shortcuts to optimize your time. A Sprite allows you to customize shortcuts for all its functions and commands from the Edit menu. Once you're done, we need to create empty frames at the end of the animations, based on how you plan to arrange your sprite sheet. If I've decided that my longest animations are 20 frames, thinking I want my sprite sheet to have a maximum of 20 columns and the animations to be organized in rows one below the other, then I'll add as many frames as needed at the end of each animation to reach a total of 20 frames. 
To do this, I position myself on the last frame of the animation. And in the Frames menu, there's the function to create empty frames. This command defaults to Control B, and I'll use this shortcut repeatedly now. Once this step is completed, I'm ready to save the master file. I'll save it outside the render folder for easy location later. I'll name it and save it in a sprite format. Our project is now prepared to finally output our sprite sheets, which we'll do in the next lesson.